Okay. If a police or peace officer takes an alleged pins into custody, they shall immediately notify the parent or other person responsible for their care. After making responsible efforts at giving notice, the officer shall, one, release the youth to the custody of his parents upon a written promise without security that they will produce the youth before a lead agency for diversion services as at a designated time and place. Two, forthwith, with all reasonable speed, take the youth directly to the designated lead agency unless it is first necessary to question the youth, in which case he will be taken to a facility for questioning designated by the chief administrator of the courts or to the youth's home with the consent of the parents. Three, take the youth in need of crisis intervention and respite service to an approved runaway program. Or four, if unable to exercise any of the above options, then take the youth directly to the family court in the county where the acts allegedly occurred. 725, where a person failed to produce a child pursuant to a written promise, the court may issue a blank requiring the child and the person who failed to produce him to appear in court. That's a summons. True. Or the court may issue a blank for either or both of them, directing that either or both be brought to the court. Is it a warrant? Yep. Oh, God. Oh, this is 727. The agency operating a detention facility or in New York City, the agency responsible for operating a foster care facility may release a child in custody before the filing of a petition to the custody of the parents, relative, PLR, guardian, or legal custodian when the events occasioning the taking into custody appear to involve a petition to determine whether the person is in need of supervision rather than a petition to determine whether the person is a blank. Juvenile delinquent? Yes. Oh my God, I'm completely guessed. Okay, 728. If a child in custody is brought before a judge of the family court before a petition is filed, the judge shall hold a preliminary hearing. What is the purpose of the preliminary hearing? Is it to see if the court has jurisdiction? Yes! Oh my god! Woo! She got that right! At the commencement of the hearing, the judge shall advise the child of his rights. What are the rights? Okay, so if I give you the options, you're going to know <laughs> what they are. He has a right to an attorney. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, mm. uh, probation services? Remain silent. Uh, <laughs> uh, is it like the Miranda rights type of stuff? It's basically that. It's the right to be represented by counsel of his own choosing, the right to have an attorney assigned if he can't get one, and the judge must also allow the child a reasonable time to send for his parents or PLR or for his attorney to appear and adjourn the hearing for that purpose. You know, in the 70s, flown around, like... <laughs> So, I think that's why a lot of this stuff sounds so foreign. It's so crazy. God. After the hearing, if the court does not appear to have jurisdiction, the court shall blank. The court shall... No jurisdiction. No jurisdiction. No jurisdiction. Dismiss the petition? Well, there's no petition yet, because we're having uh, a preliminary oh, oh, hearing. Um... Refer the case. Order the release of the child. Oh, God. And then it says an order of release under the section may, but need not be, conditioned upon the giving of recognizance. Um, upon a finding of facts and reasons which support a detention order, the court shall determine and state in any order directing detention. Okay, now you're just going to tell me if all of these are true or false, Okay. Okay. So now this is an order supporting detention and what the court has to state in it. One, there is a substantial likelihood that the youth and his family will continue to benefit from diversion services. True. False. Oh, my God. It's, there is no substantial likelihood. Zero substantial Wait, what, likelihood. What, what, what is this order for? 
an order that support okay so when the the court has facts and reasons that support a detention order oh a detention order okay yeah. so that would make sense okay yeah right yeah sorry okay detention all right order. so let me let me say it again so the court they're gonna be detained this they're gonna be detained in a foster gonna... care facility or something okay okay one there is no as in zero substantial likelihood that the youth and his family will continue to benefit from diversion services and that all available alternatives to detention have been exhausted. Continuation of the child in the child's home would be in the best interest of the child based upon the facts and circumstances available to the court at the time of the hearing. But they're going to for detention, so wouldn't that be false? It's false! Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> because the answer is, and whether continuation of the child in its home would be contrary to the best interest of the child based upon the facts and circumstances available to the court at the time of the hearing. And three, whether reasonable efforts were made prior to the court date that resulted in detention order to prevent or eliminate the need for removal, or if the child had already been removed, whether reasonable efforts were made to make it possible for the child to return home. True or false? False, because they're not supposed to, if, they're, if they were able to go home, they wouldn't be detained. This one is true. What? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this test is so hard. It's really hard. I feel like a moron. <laughs> Me too, because I didn't even know any of these either. Um, and I wrote, I did this at lunch today, and I still don't remember them. Um, oh, God. All right, so I'm going to read them all as if they're true. Yeah, read them all. Okay. So this is, this is the preliminary hearing to determine whether court has jurisdiction. An order of release may be conditioned upon giving a re reconnaissance. But upon a finding that the court is going to order a detention... The court has to determine and state in any order directing detention, one, no substantial likelihood the family or youth will benefit from diversion services, and that all available alternatives to detention have been exhausted, and two, continuation in the home is contrary to best interest, and three, if reasonable efforts were made, and four, whether the setting of the detention takes into account the proximity to the community in which the person alleged to be a PINS lives or where such parents or where person will be discharged and the existing educational setting of such person and the proximity of such setting to the location of detention. So basically, how far is the school from the detention? Oh, thank God I was recording for a minute. I thought I wasn't. I was going to kill myself. I had to read that again. <laughs> No substantial likelihood they'll benefit from diversion and all available alternatives are exhausted. Two, contrary to best interest. Three, whether reasonable efforts were made. Four, proximity to the school. And that's it. So it's four things, not five. All right, 729. Wait, what was that for again? Four was the proximity to the person's school. No, I mean, what was that for that you just read? Oh, it's for... A fact supporting a detention order. Okay. Okay. So they really, it really has to be like exceptional, exceptional circumstances for them to order detention under this article. Okay. 729. No person may be detained under Article 7 for more than blank hours or the next day court is in session, whichever is first, without a blank. 72 hours without a hearing. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. I know the easy crap. I don't know all this other crap. Yeah, this test is hard. A proceeding to adjudicate a... This is 732. A proceeding to adjudicate a PINS is originated by the filing of a petition alleging that all these other things about, you know, either they're a bad kid beyond the lawful control, or a victim of sex exploitation, and specifying the acts on which the allegations are based, and a time and place they allegedly occurred, and that respondent was under 18 at the time of the acts, 
that the respondent requires supervision or treatment, and D, that the petitioner has complied with blank. Oh, the probation thing when they do divert diversion services? Yes! Or 